So Samsung finally came out with a folding phone that costs the same as a regular flagship. And on top of that, it has a lot of the same specs, the same processor, the same storage, the same 120 Hertz refresh rate on their screen. Like they really didn't cut many corners. And so when you're looking at these two, I mean, you can obviously tell they're very different devices. So does that mean the folding phone is the better buy? Well, in this video, we're comparing the brand new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 to the also pretty new Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus. These are both selling for exactly the same price, and like I said, the spec sheets match up pretty well, so this should be a pretty good comparison. Now, of course, you'll know that right off the bat, there are plenty of major differences, and in this video, I'm going to dive into those differences, from the camera, to the actual practical use every day, to the battery life, and anything else that you might want to know. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to mention that I haven't actually yet released my full review of the Z Flip 3. So if you're new here and you want to see that video, it is coming very soon and I found a lot of nuances. I've kind of been waiting for this video because I found a lot of very little quirky things that I want to talk about in that video. So if you're new here, consider subscribing so you don't miss that video. Now, getting into these two phones, I kind of want to go back and forth and talk about what the Z Flip does better and then what the 21 does better. So let's start off with some of the obvious benefits of the Z Flip 3. The first one is that, of course, it folds, which technically makes it more pocketable, but really, it makes it a really cool phone, especially now when almost nobody I know has a folding phone, so going out in public with this is just really cool. Everybody wants to see it, it's like a party trick, you show everyone your folding phone, like, it's kind of fun to have, honestly. And while there are plenty of practical aspects of it, like, having a cool-looking phone is really one of the big benefits. And of course, there are plenty of cool benefits of having a folding phone. So Samsung talked about flex mode, where you can have kind of like a dual screen layout, like a Game Boy DS kind of. And while not a whole lot of apps really support that yet, I found that having it kind of propped up was really nice when I'm working on my laptop, just to see notifications there or maybe have messages open there. Like, it's just more convenient to have your phone slightly propped up so you can see it when it's laying down on a table. Of course, there's other things, like people talk about propping it up so it has its own tripod essentially to take pictures. I found that, yes, that's useful, but it's also really useful to use that for a flashlight. So, for example, if you lose power, unlike having to like prop your phone up on the floor and it, it blinds you or it falls down, bending it up like this, especially like recently we had a hurricane and everybody lost power, it was really nice to be able to set that and have like a nice little lantern shining on what I was doing. Now, of course, not everything's good with this, and we'll get back to some more of the benefits in a second, but looking at what the S21 Plus does better, the first and most obvious benefit is that you don't have a crease in the middle of your screen. You have a nice flat display that when you rub your finger on it, obviously you don't feel anything, nothing's distorted, and that's a big benefit of that. And flipping it over to the back, you'll see it also has an extra camera sensor. So this is a good opportunity to get into a camera test. As you can see here, they both have essentially the same wide angle and ultra wide angle lenses, which is really great. It means that you are getting great photos on both of these phones, in most situations. But what the S21 Plus has is actually that telephoto lens, which is a 64 megapixel lens, allowing you to zoom into 30x, as you can see right here, versus just 10x as you're getting as the max zoom on the Z Flip 3. So anybody looking to zoom in, that's going to be a major discrepancy. So, I mean, leave a comment below and let me know what you guys think when you're comparing these photos. Like, is it worth it for you to not have a telephoto lens? Do you not typically zoom in more than 10x or do you really wish that you had that and is this maybe a game changer? For me, I think that's one of the big things I'm definitely going to miss using the Z Flip 3. Now, with that being said, selfies are also really important. Luckily, they both have that same 10, 10 megapixel hole punch selfie camera, but I'm actually going to give the win here for selfies to the Z Flip because you have that little back screen. So the, the screen on the rear allows you to take selfies with the rear lenses and they're gonna be great photos. They're gonna be far better photos actually. And you can have ultra wide or wide angle obviously and you can see what photo you're taking. Technically you could do the same with the S21 but you're gonna be like not framed correctly and not everyone's gonna know who's in the photo. It just, it's not really gonna work out like that. So that's a big benefit again of the Z Flip 3, being able to do that. And speaking of the cover display, there are a lot of benefits of having this on the Galaxy Z Flip 3. And one kind of interesting little nuanced one is that when you have a folding phone, I find that it has to be a little bit more deliberate when you're going to get distracted or somehow engage with the notification. And so having a little display in the front that tells me the notification, and then I mentally decide, all right, do I want to open my phone and engage with this or not? And it's a really quick decision, but I find that I'm less likely to get distracted when my, fold, my, when my phone is folded. And it's kind of just like a nice little barrier, keeps me more focused, 
And on top of that, you can also engage with like uh, a lot of things on the little cover display, from uh, your music to your weather to your calendar, your alarms, how many steps you took today. There are a lot of little widgets you can have on that cover display, and I think it's kind of nice to have that. It's really cool. It gives you quick access to music controls and things of that nature. Looking at the actual designs of these phones, technically the Z Flip 3 is about a half ounce lighter, and I'll explain exactly why that is, because it is pretty obvious. And it's also a little bit narrower, it's a little bit longer, and it's a little bit thinner as well. So holding the phones, like if it was a non-folded phone, I would like the Z Flip 3 a little bit better, although it is kind of a weird aspect ratio. It's kind of hard to get used to that. And if you're watching videos, there's definitely some dead space there, but it is. it does feel like a little bit more of a futuristic phone being that it's so thin. Now, some of the reason for that thinness is because the battery is substantially smaller on the Z Flip 3. So the Z Flip 3 has a 3300 milliamp hour battery, while the Galaxy S21 Plus has a 4800 milliamp hour battery, which as you can guess, because they have the same specs essentially, you're gonna get more than a 50% longer battery life on the Galaxy S21 Plus, which gives you a solid one and a half days or something like that, while the Z Flip 3, Besides the telephoto lens, that is hands down the biggest drawback of this phone. The battery life, I mean, I'm struggling to get through a full day. I actually have not yet gotten through an entire day. It usually dies around like 4.30 in the afternoon, unless I have it on a, a wireless charging stand all day, which is nice that again, this phone does allow for wireless charging and kind of a nice benefit of the folding aspect is that while it can charge wirelessly on the bottom, you have this little space in the top to put like a pop socket or if you have a case that has a little ring in the middle, no longer do you have to decide between having a grip on the back and having wireless charging. With this phone, you can have both. And so that's a positive. If you plan on wirelessly charging a lot, the battery is not going to be as big of a drawback. But if you don't, like, keep in mind, this battery is bad. An interesting benefit of the S21 Plus is that although these both have IPX8 water resistance, the S21 Plus actually has IP68 water resistance. So the reason it's an X on the flip and a six on the on the S21 Plus here is because you technically have dust resistance on the Galaxy S21 Plus, which is pretty standard. Most phones are dust resistant. You don't have to worry about that unless you have a hinge. So I imagine over time, if you have a lot of lint in your pocket or dust or sand or anything, that could potentially get jammed in this hinge and it would either make a sound when you open it or it'll get tough to open. I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna play out. I'm excited to see how this actually works out when I'm using this every day, um, but that's definitely a, a big drawback for the Z Flip is that you don't have dust resistance. Something that a lot of people might not mention between these phones, which is also an advantage of the S21 Plus, is that it has Samsung DeX. If you don't know what that is, then you don't need to worry anyway, but for anybody who heavily uses DeX, you won't be seeing that on the Z Flip 3. And another interesting difference between these phones is the S21 Plus has an in-screen fingerprint sensor, uh, which is great for signing in when you already have the phone open, whereas the Z Flip 3 has a little side-mounted fingerprint sensor, which is not uncommon for a lot of phones. We've seen that before. But what they do interesting on this is that you have some extra functionality. You can actually swipe down with this and it'll open up your, your quick settings, which for such a tall phone, it is kind of nice to not have to reach up any higher. Just swiping that is it, kind of a nice feature on that. Now, talking about how tall this phone is, this is interesting because it, I find that it is nice. It's a little bit easier for multitasking. I don't usually do the top and bottom like 50-50 multitasking. I find that the most common multitasking I do is maybe when I'm driving, I'll have like Spotify on the, like the top third and then Google Maps on the bottom two thirds. But other than that, there really are a lot of similarities with these phones. Like I said, the same processor, same refresh rate, same RAM storage, same camera lenses, except for that telephoto. And of course they have a lot of the same features. So. Which one's actually the better one to buy? Well, it comes down to this, guys. I think if anybody is an early adopter, if you're very excited about having a phone that folds, then it's gonna be obvious. You probably already know by now that you really want this phone. But if you're still on the fence, I have to push you over to the Galaxy S21 Plus. Although it's a lot less exciting, it's much more reliable as an everyday phone, meaning that you don't have to worry about dust, you have a really nice telephoto lens, and you have a battery that is going to comfortably get you through at least one day, if not a little bit more than that. I think a lot of people who are just looking for an everyday phone would be disappointed by this battery life, unless of course like you're a tech nerd and you have wireless chargers everywhere, most people would not like the battery here. Now, even though I'm recommending the S21 Plus, this is still a huge win for Samsung foldables. 
The fact that we're even comparing a folding phone to a Samsung flagship means that they've come so far that this is finally a viable alternative. And if the only drawbacks now are the battery life, the camera and the dust resistance, those are all things that they can easily upgrade with the next edition. Which means that now I think this is finally going to be the first widespread adopted, essentially folding phone that you might start to see out in the wild. It's more affordable, it's very, very capable. At least for me, I definitely plan on using the Z Flip 3 as my everyday phone. I really wanna see what the benefits actually are of using a folding phone. We know that seeing a folding phone is exciting. It makes Samsung look really cool, they're very innovative. Yeah, like all that's very exciting, but are these ever going to get widespread adoption and replace regular glass slab phones? Like, I'm very excited to see where this goes, what kind of new uses people find with these phones, and on the flip side, what type of drawbacks we come across. So that's been it. That's my take on the S21 Plus versus the Z Flip 3. Leave a comment below and let me know which of these two you think is better and what you think Samsung needs to do to make this actually widely adopted, or if you think this is actually going to be widely adopted as it is. As always, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.